Welcome back. We're in lesson 28. We're going to talk about fractional parts of a number. So what does that mean? What that means is we are going to take a number and we're going to compare it to a fraction mathematically and come up with the number that represents that fraction of the number we compared it to. So for instance, if I were to say one half of six is what number? The parts of this that we need to recognize, um, we have the fraction, we have a multiplication step, then we have what number? We have the number that we are starting with or looking for. Is is always an equal sign, and then we have the result. Okay. So the fraction that is multiplied by a number gives us the result. That is our format that we are going to look for. That is what you need to write down in your notes. Okay, if we were to sub in these numbers into this format, we would say 1 half times 6 equals, and let's just say R for result, okay, because we don't know what that is yet. How do we multiply a fraction times a whole number? We put the whole number over 1. 1 times 6 is 6. 2 times 1 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And we can agree that half of 6 is 3. And we can see how we got that mathematically. So we use this formula. The fraction times some number gives us a result equals R. So let's use that on these problems from the book. There's only three of them. 28.1, 28.2, and 28.3. So let's put them in the proper format. So our fraction is 3 fourths for 28.1. Of is our multiplication. And we're going to use, we're going to switch to using a dot for multiplication because when we begin using variables and we use the variable x, it can get real confusing as to is this a multiplication symbol or is this a variable? So from now on you're going to see me use a dot to represent multiplication. Um, and that's also what Jupyter Ed uses to represent multiplication is a dot. So 3 fourths times some number, we're going to use x because we don't know what that number is, is 69, right? So that's our original equation for this word problem. We have our fraction, we have our multiplication, and then we have a variable x equals, and then this is our result. And so we put that all together, okay? Now what do we do when we have a variable? We smush it together with our fraction. So this would look like this. 3 fourths of x equals 69, right? How do we get rid of a fraction with a variable? We use the reciprocal fraction. That means we flip it and multiply both sides because whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other in order to keep it equal. So we're going to multiply both sides by 4 over 3. How do we multiply a fraction times a whole number? We put the whole number over 1. Okay, so these cancel. This becomes x equals 69 times 4, I believe, is 276. Yes, uh, so 276, 1 times 3 is 3. 276 divided by 3 equals 92. So 3 fourths of 92, which was our x, is 69. So the answer is 92. So now we're going to do this one. Only this time the fraction is missing. So the fraction is our variable, right? So we have x times 40, which is our, our number, equals 24. 
So all we have to do is put that in the proper format. And we always put our constant first. So this is gonna look like 40x equals 24, right? Because when we multiply 40 times x, that's what it looks like, that's the way we write it. So now we just divide both sides by 40. We know how to do that. These cancel. X is equal to 24 over 40, which reduces to, if I divide this by 8, that's 3. And if I divide this by 8, that's 5. So X is equal to 3 fifths. That is the fraction. So 3 fifths of 40 is 24. Okay? So I am going to do this last one just so we can get in the hang of it. So now we have our fraction, two and a half of 240 is what number? So our fraction is two and a half. We don't like mixed numbers in algebra. We don't like them, they're ugly. We want them streamlined. So we put them back into an improper fraction. Two times two is four plus one is five. So five over two times 240 is some number, okay? So now we just put our whole number over one and then we solve. So five times 240, well five times 200 is 1,000. Five times 40 is 200, so that's 1,200 over two equals x, and we know we can reduce 1,200 to 600. So two and a half of 240 is 600. And basically what we're saying is two times, two and a half times 240 is 600. All right? It's pretty easy once you remember fraction times, then your, very, your number is result, okay? If you can keep it in that format, you can fill in, just drop in those blanks and you can solve it every single time. All right, moving on. Pause and take notes if you need to. I'm gonna clear the page and we're going to do functional notation. Um, so we're gonna start working on functions. Functions are what we use uh, in an algebraic expression um, where we solve for x or y, or x and y. Um, and this is leading into graphing and finding the x and y coordinates on a Cartesian coordinate system. And that would be the graph paper down here. That's where we start using graph paper, okay? So uh, let's begin by talking about how to do that. If I were to give you a problem, x plus two, uh, we might not know what x is, but we could decide what the value of x is. I could drop in, I could say, well, x is equal to five, so that means that five plus two equals seven. Or I could change my mind and say, no, I think I'm gonna swap it out three, x is equal to three, so three plus two now equals five. So whatever x is, think of it as a placeholder that can change value, that's what a variable is. Um, y, is a function of x. And what I mean by that is, it is dependent upon whatever you decide the x value is going to be. So when I have a function that says y equals x plus two, whatever I pick for x is gonna be what y equals. So let's say I picked five as the value for x, well, y equals five plus two. So now y equals seven. Well, if I decide that I wanna sub in three 
for 2, or 3 for x, well now y equals 5. So y is entirely dependent upon whatever value we sub in for x, whatever value we decide x is, and then that tells us what our y coordinate is. Okay? So x is independent because we get to pick it. y is dependent because whatever we pick for x tells us what y is. We can't just pick something for y and then solve for x. That's not the way a function works. Functions depend on the x, which is the number line, or the horizontal axis of your Cartesian coordinate system. So let's try some problems with that. Let's do 28.4. Let me clear the page. I'm going to go ahead and put the other up too. So we are going to take x. If x equals 2, then this is our problem that we're going to solve. So we have just decided that x is going to equal 2, but we have this formula we're going to substitute it in. So what we're going to do is we're going to make little buckets. Okay, So we have a bucket for x there, and whenever we have an exponent with a variable that we need to sub in for, the exponent goes on the outside of the bucket. Minus 3, here's another little bucket. You could use a circle or a box, it doesn't matter. I use just parentheses because I'm used to drawing them, but notice when I do that I make the existing parentheses much larger so I can tell the difference. Now I'm going to drop in my value of x into each one of the buckets that I've created. Now I can do the math. So I have a 2 on the outside. All right, 2 squared is going to be 4, and a negative 3 times 2 is going to be a negative 6. All right, 4 minus 6 becomes a negative 2. 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4. So if x equals 2, this is equal to a negative 4. All right, so now let's talk a little bit more about functional notation, or let's talk about functional notation. This is, um, this is what we're doing, but there is a way to write it that uh, is more explicit. It explains what we're doing, and that's functional notation. And all it is is it's giving a particular formula or equation a name. And this is how we would write it. This is 28.5. We write it like this. We say if f of x, function of x, okay, if the function x, we say f of x, but it's the function x, equals this, that's the same problem that we had over here, we're going to find f of 2. This is saying exactly the same thing that this said, but it's just written in functional notation. That just says that if the function x equals this formula, what is it when we sub 2 in for x? That's all it is. It's very, very simple. You're going to see this on a test, and it's the same thing as this. You just have to be able to break it apart and know, oh, all I have to do is this right here, x x squared minus 3x, and then I need to sub my buckets in. So if you can remember that, that it's just telling you to do the buckets, then you will be just fine. That's all you're doing. It's the same exact thing as this. It's just written a little bit different. It's written um, the way that mathematicians speak to each other. It's just, you know, it's math speak. So you just do the same problem all over again. 
2 times and we figured out this was negative 2, right, from over here. It's the same problem. So it's okay to look over here. It's fine. We did the problem so we can look at our own answer. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Same problem. It's just written differently. It just means you're just going to look at whatever is here and sub it in for whatever variable is written here. Okay, so if this had been a letter G, then you would take this number and all the G's that you were to see in this equation or this, this formula, you would put the two in for all the G's. Not hard. It's just substitution. All right, so we have a couple, couple more problems. All right, I'm going to clear the page, and let's do 28.6. All right, so this is technically 28.7, but it's the same thing they did to us in 28.4 and 28.5. 28.6 is this problem with this um, value. This is just teaching us again how to look at it. In this instance, they named the function g instead of f doesn't matter. They can name it whatever they want. The main thing is to say to yourself, this is the variable that they want me to swap out. Where is the value they want me to use? Oh, here it is. g of x, g of 2. So x equals negative 2. So all I have to do is write this formula here and then sub in x for negative 2. So you put in your negative 2 in your buckets. Remember the exponents on the outside. There you go. So now you do the calculations. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, right? 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 minus 1 that becomes a negative 5. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Right? That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. This is just a fancier way to write it where they can give multiple functions a name. And it's so they can list multiple functions in one sentence and, they, and then at the end, they can say, okay, well, in G, I want X to equal this. In F, I want X to equal this. In H, I want X to equal this. Um, but then they can use the same variable in each one. And they're just calling it out by the formula's name. They're giving the formula a name, and they're just finding a mechanism in which to sub out that value for X. All you have to do is write the formula down and substitute whatever value they give you into the variable that they have noted to be subbed. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll see you in class.